Hello, I'm Rick Stavers. I'd like to welcome you to Young Martin's Reels. Today, we're going to be working on these two trim line reels. Uh, we're going to set this one over to the side. We're going to start with this one because there's not much that can be done with it. We're going to start off by taking the spool off. There we go. And I don't believe that this will come off after that. I think that's about as far as we can go down with it. And there you have it. That is as far down as you can take this trim line, trim sport reel down. There's uh, no way to really get into it and uh, to service it. No way to add oil. No way to add grease. Um, they've sealed the reel up as though they don't want you getting into it. And I don't know if they sealed it with glue or if they soldered it together. I think it's a plastic body, so I think they've glued it together down along the seam. And I think if you if it was bad, if this reel was non-functional, what you could probably do is go ahead and drill out this steel rivet right here and then pry this body apart, and I think it would open up. But I'm afraid that would damage the reel. So since it's a functional reel, I'm not going to do that. We're going to clean it up and add a little bit of lubricant where we can and then we're going to send it right back out the door. If anybody has one of these that's broken and doesn't mind it being drilled and taken apart, I'd be happy to uh, get into taking it apart for you to do that. But this one is a perfectly functional reel. There's nothing wrong with this after a little bit of dirt. So we are not going to get into it like that. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit of grease here to make the spool come on and off easier. And I'm going to add just a little bit of grease here to the bale to make it so that it will operate a little bit smoother. All right. So let's put the spool back on. There we go. Put the knob back on the end. And that knob is what tightens down your drag. We're going to put a little oil on this shaft right here where it goes down inside there. That's the only place I can see that I can possibly get oil into this is along this, that shaft. Put that, tighten that knob down. And let's see if we can get this bale to trip easier. This doesn't want to go all the way. It starts to flip back and then it wants to stick. As it comes around, it's supposed to hit here. And it's supposed to flip and then see it goes to right there and it stops. All right. Let's try a little bit of something here. It appears that this arm is bent down slightly. Let's see if I can get this to come out. There we go. And let's take this spool back off for a moment. There we go. And see if we can straighten that arm up just a little bit. See if that doesn't make it operate just a hair better. I 
No, that didn't help it a bit. Oh, you know what? Let's see if I let's see if I have this figured out. I think they may have had this on backwards. Let's see if that's true. Nope. That's not the case. Yeah. It was on backwards. Yep, somebody had taken the bell wire off and put it on backwards. So we've got that fixed now. All right, I'm gonna take this around to those line up on the shaft there. Slide that down. There we go. Okay, so we were able to service this a little bit and actually fix it. That's supposed to go like so, and then there we go. Okay, somebody had the bail wire on backwards. There's a ramp over here that this piece here is supposed to ride on. It's supposed to trip this down and make it drop down into place. And that ramp, this piece was on there, and that wasn't actually going down the ramp. So, okay, there we have the Trimline Trim Sport 450. We've got that one serviced and running. Let's see what we can do with this beast. All right, we're going to start off by taking off the spool. And it's a heavy spool. It's got a heavy spring here. Okay, that's the clicker for the drag. All right. That sits over the top of it. Not sure what the slot is for, but we'll clean that up. Okay. So far, so good. This is a heavy reel, much heavier than that one. I think that one's plastic, and this one seems to be steel. Okay. Doesn't seem to want to come out that way. And we are not going to overly get overzealous with this. Take this screw out to get the handle off. Look at the size of that screw. That screw is bigger, twice the size of the axle. Look at that thing. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, set that over to the side. Now, the body's held together by these by this spring clip right here. And it appears that you just pop that loose all the way around like so. And that spring clip comes off. And now, the body will come apart where it can be serviced and cleaned. The axle will come out at that point. I've never seen an axle that was offset. We have an offset axle here, so that's interesting. And this should come out, but it doesn't want to. I wonder why. There we go. Just old dirt and grease gummed up on there. Okay, we can clean that up. There comes the handle off. That handle actually fits into the gear, there's a square set here in the gear that that handle's gonna fit into, like so. That is something else. All right, I'm going offline for a few minutes while I clean this thing up, get the grease out of it, and uh, I'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Okay, parts are clean. We're back together, or back to put it together. The only thing I haven't cleaned yet is the spool, and I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, we're going to start off with this rotor assembly, and we're going to, I've cleaned this out in here. Both of the ramps are now clean. I could probably stand to take a file and dress this one just a little bit, but I think it's okay, so I don't want to take off any metal I don't have to. Okay, we're going to slip that in there first. And when I come back over here, now this 
Bale wouldn't trip before. Let's see how it's going to do now. Oh, there we go. Got all that dirt and grime out of there. It's going to trip just fine. And it doesn't even have grease or oil in it yet. Gonna put just a little bit of grease on each side of these. Normally, I use oil on bales. Although here lately, I really have used more grease than I would have thought. Okay, that's working fine. Let's see what comes next. All right, these two halves have to go back together for the hole. So we're gonna come back here. I don't wanna ever take this thing back apart again. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grease this. This thing had some kind of nasty stuff in it. I'm not sure what it was, but we're gonna put some grease. We're gonna grease everything in this one. It might slow it down just a little bit, but it will protect it and take care of it, I think, for many years to come if we do that. So let's go ahead. Here's our anti-reverse ball inside here. We're gonna slip this in. We're gonna put just a little bit of grease on the cog for the anti-reverse ball, just because they tend to wear out if they're not greased. Slide that back in. Let's see what we have to do. There we go, clicker's working. All right, with that held in place, we're gonna go ahead and reinsert this square. We're gonna put a little bit of grease inside where this slides in, just to help ease it in a little bit. That slides in like that, and then we have this gigantic, now, interesting enough, as big as this thing is, it is aluminum. It's not a steel screw. So it's a great big giant aluminum screw. So let's go ahead and put that in. And that should hold all of this tight. Be careful not to cross thread it. Like so, there we go. Anti-reverse, can we turn it off? We can. We're gonna put a dab of oil right here. Because it feels as though there's just a little bit of friction happening there. Isn't that the bind right there? Right there, there's a bind. Let me loosen the screw up, see if it's a tension thing. Okay, loosen that a little bit. Yeah, this seems to just be overly tightened down, but if you don't tighten it down, I'm afraid it's gonna bind. Let's see if there's a burr or something underneath there. Let's take this back off and take a look at it. Okay. If you look, see these posts right here? There are little indentions right there. And some of them have little burrs on them. And I think that's caused, yeah. Let's clean that up. There's the worst one right there. There, I think that dressed that out. And okay. Let's see if we've taken care of that. And I believe that we have. Hold that back in. Put our screw back in. Okay, that's wanting to turn, so we'll flip the anti-reverse back on while we tighten it. All right, now let's see what we have. There we go. And we no longer have any binding. 
All right, that's nice. Okay, this is ready to go back on. And this is the side that we're gonna set everything else back into. So, we're gonna come back here. It's our axle shaft. We're gonna put our axle shaft. We're gonna put a light coating of grease on it. And again, removing burrs. Remember I had difficulty pulling the axle shaft all the way out. There was a slight burr right here where this had been tightened down a few too many times on it. And all I had to do was uh, take a file and gently dress that down. And now it's gone. And now the axle shaft slides right in. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and grease this pinion sleeve right here where it rides inside this frame do the same thing on the other side of the frame and let's go ahead and put some grease on the main gear that done we will sit this back on here now this axle shaft is going to have to be rotated towards this like so so that it fits over that notch right there <laughs> well hand act coordination here there we go sit that on there and now you have to kind of hold it in place while you come back and slide this piece over top like that once that's on we're going to take our clip again we're going to slip it back on i took it off this way so i'm going to put it back on the same way i took it off goes on like that and there we go well almost this bottom one doesn't want to go in where it belongs. And that's the one I took out last. There we go. There. And let's get this last one up over here. Okay, this is all the way down and around then this should just pop into place and it's not so let's try going the other way with it Put back down there okay slide it down but this one all the way down first So, and bring this one around. All right, I got a phone call while I was in the middle of doing that, and I forgot to turn the, phone, the camera back on. So let me show you how this goes back together. All right, we had it to this point, and the way this goes is you will take Click it into the first one. But you see this lip right here? You have to have this band under that lip as you bring it around. Okay? Make sure that it's down under that lip. I know you're going to want to try to get it up onto here first, but get it under the lip and bring it around, and then you can clip it in like so. Okay? And that's pretty simple. It holds the reel together. All right. With that done, we're going to put the spool back on. There's a spool, and it just spins. There's nothing holding that. It's just a round on a round. Okay, but I'll tell you what we are gonna do. We'll go ahead and add some grease right here to the shaft where it has to spin on that shaft. And we'll put a little grease here at the base of this where the spool hits so that it can spin when it's operating its drag. Next, it's going to go this clicker for the drag, and it goes with this, this 
his little tab sticking down. Well, that's tab sticking down. He's got to go face face down on here. And there's a flat spot. There we go. Goes on like that. There's another tab sticking up over on that side. That's what we want. I'm going to put this guy on now. He goes on like that with that piece sticking through there. I think that's what it could go the other way. Let's see if it works this way as well. Yeah, I think it's going to work either way. All right. Screw the drag knob back on. Okay. With that, with that piece in that place, we don't seem to have any click for our clicker. So we're going to flip this over the other way so that that piece is on the long side. And maybe then the, direct, the clicker will work because it didn't work the other way. Maybe you can do it, use it either way. One, if you wish to have a clicker on your drag and one without. There you go. There's a clicker on a drag. Okay. There you have a pair of trim line reels. Now, I bought these specifically off of eBay to bring and show you guys. They were something I hadn't seen before, so I bought them. And uh, I plan to eliminate them now, get them out of my, if anybody out there is interested in them, let me know and we'll see if we can't get them off to you. Otherwise, they're going to go on eBay next week when I set up my eBay account and start moving things out. So this for now, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, that's okay. Let me know why. And um, you can hit the dislike button if you'd like. And um, if you wish to um, see more videos like this, by all means, uh, hit the subscribe button. For now, that's Rick Stivers, The Young Martin's Reels, signing out.